A while ago, I made a video about this keyboard, the MX Mechanical from Logitech, as it was considered one of the best wireless keyboards that you can buy. Also, it sounds pretty good. But this keyboard has some flaws, and at the time, I was missing one key ingredient, its biggest competitor. Just one sec. This is the K-Pro series, a lineup of wireless mechanical keyboards from Keychron that are fully customizable, have built-in backlights, and can be used with both Mac and PC. They come in a variety of layouts, so for the sake of this video, I selected what I believe to be the three most popular models. The K2 Pro with 75% compact key layout, the K8 Pro with 10 keyless layout, and the K3 Pro, an ultra slim, low profile, 75% layout. This is essentially Keychron's version of the MX Mechanical Mini. Now, all of these K Pro series keyboards have the same features and functionality. The only difference is their physical size and key layouts. And as someone who's trying to get more into the world of keyboards, specifically mechanical keyboards, I really wanted to try the K Pro series and see how I liked the experience. Okay, so let's start with the most important factor, right? the price. These keyboards come in at around 90 US dollars. Yes, more expensive than a crappy $20 membrane keyboard, but compared to the overpriced gaming oriented or more premium mechanical keyboards out there, like the $150 MX Mechanical Mini from Logitech, I think the pricing is pretty competitive. I mean, especially once you take a look at some of the features. Now, regardless of which K-Pro keyboard you buy, in the box you get a braided USB-C cable for charging or using it directly with your computer. And you'll also get keycaps for both Mac OS and Windows and four tools. But I'll touch on them a little bit later. The first thing you notice is just how solid it feels due to the metal chassis and overall weight. Now, I personally like a bit of weight in a keyboard. It both reduces flex and paired with the beefy rubber feet on the bottom means that it's not going to slide around your desk. The rest of the keyboard is built solidly too. The keycaps are double shot PBT plastic, which is pretty much the gold standard. Pause the video if you want a quick rundown on their advantages. I also like the overall minimal color scheme of this keyboard with the accented keys. It's a nice change from your usual solid black keyboards. And there's also zero logos of any kind, so big props to Keychron here. Now, all of the K-Pro models have flip out feet with two levels of adjustability, but don't underestimate the comfort of a low profile keyboard like the K3 Pro. Many people find that typing on a flat, low profile keyboard is more comfortable because your hand is able to rest in a more neutral, flat position while typing. Now, the side toggles on the larger models feel tactile and sturdy. The same cannot be said for the low profile K3 Pro. They're tiny and have quite a bit of movement, so much so that they rattle when you shake the keyboard. Now, admittedly, you're not going to be using them that often, but it's just a strange thing to cheap out on. Speaking of cheaping out, you know what you shouldn't cheap out on? A laptop bag. Thanks to Delta Hub for sponsoring this section of the video. If you have to carry around your laptop and tech accessories, you need to check out Formo, the ultimate three-in-one laptop bag. What sets Formo apart from the competition is its ability to transform into a fully ergonomic workstation with the pull of a string. With an ideal screen viewing angle of 15 degrees and secure device placement, you can work comfortably from anywhere. There's an elastic back pocket for your charger, headphones, or even passport, and everything is secured by eight layers of protection and a water repellent coating. And with its adjustable strap, Formo transforms from a sleeve into a bag that's incredibly convenient to carry around. Combining all the pros of a sleek laptop bag, protective sleeve, and ergonomic workstation, Formo is perfect for people who are always on the move, 
whether it's the office, airport, or coffee shop. So click the link in the description below and experience the ultimate convenience and protection for your laptop and tech accessories. Okay, let's talk about connectivity. You have two options, wired via the cable or wireless via Bluetooth. The included USB-C to USB-A cable will work for wired connections or because there's nothing proprietary, you can use your own cable. Wireless connectivity is achieved via Bluetooth 5.1, and I never had any issues connecting any of these keyboards to both Mac and PC. I also didn't experience any major latency while gaming. The wireless polling rate, which is essentially how often the keyboard sends data to your computer, is 90 hertz, which is low, but you probably won't notice when gaming. Now, in wired mode, polling rate increases to 1000 hertz. So that's always an option if you're wanting to get sweaty in a competitive shooter, for example. Now, something I was really happy to see was the ability to pair the K-Pro boards with up to three separate devices and switch between them with a hotkey. For those of us who use multiple computers, this is super handy, even different operating systems, because getting back to those toggles on the side, there's an additional one where you can specify what operating system you're using and get access to the different Mac OS and Windows function key layers. What are layers, you may ask? All K-Pro models come with QMK and VIA technology. QMK stands for Quantum Mechanical Keyboard, and the too long, don't watch summary of QMK is that it allows you to customize the software on your keyboard. You can do this using VIA, which is essentially a communications protocol between your keyboard and your computer. First, simply attach your keyboard to your computer with the cable. Then go to the VIA web interface. Yes, web interface, not some stupid bloated proprietary software or messing around with downloading random drivers. And boom, within about five seconds, you can customize everything, including key remapping, backlight effects, macros, and being able to save and reuse these profiles on any future keyboard. Sure, the VIA interface is a bit bland and lacks features compared to, say, the Logitech's Logi Options software, but QMK is open source. And this is great because A, key remapping and saving and also exporting profiles isn't available on every keyboard in the first place. And B, if it is, it's usually proprietary, like Logi Options. So it won't work with keyboards from other brands. This means I can customize my keyboard once. For example, moving the default delete key to a better position, ingrain this layout into muscle memory, and then reuse this layout instantly on any other QMR keyboards out there, regardless of brand. Pretty sweet. Now, speaking of customizability, remember those tools I mentioned earlier? Well, you can use them to strip down and disassemble the entire keyboard for cleaning or upgrading or even switching out keycaps or the switches the plate, foam, you name it. The switches in particular are hot swappable. So if blue switches are too loud for your liking, for example, you can swap them out with some brown switches. No need to go out and buy a whole new keyboard. And if you don't like the actual keycaps themselves, easy, swap them out with different options or colors or designs. Or there are countless mods that can be performed to improve the typing experience and sound. Check out some of the popular YouTube videos on this topic. Everything from using thicker foam to taping switches. And if that's still not enough, you can go full enthusiast mode and get the bare bone option to build your own custom mechanical keyboard. Realistically, there's just a crazy level of customizability, which is something that you just don't get from almost all other keyboards on the market, especially from manufacturers like Logitech or Apple. Okay, let's talk battery life. The larger models like the K2 and K8 Pro will last for up to 300 hours of Bluetooth working time. If you work for about, say, eight hours a day, every day, it means you'll likely have to charge it around once a month. The low profile K3 Pro, on the other hand, is significantly less at about 100 hours total battery life or requiring a charge around every 10 to 14 days, assuming you use it for eight hours every day. And this might be annoying for some people, especially when compared to the MX Mechanical from Logitech, for example, that 
only requires a charge about every six months. And that is a massive difference. And all of these numbers so far are with the backlight turned off. With the backlight turned on at the lowest brightness setting, expect to only get about a third of the aforementioned battery life. So charging every one to two weeks for the larger models and every three to four days on the low profile K3. Personally, I don't need the backlight, so I just keep it off to maximize battery life. So let's move on to probably the most important thing, and that's the overall typing experience. Now, assuming you buy the standard fully assembled version of the K Pro, like I have here, the typing experience out of the box is very good. The keys feel responsive, the spacebar isn't mushy, and you get the classic mechanical sound and feel. Remember that this does depend on the switch you get, red, blue, or brown. Switch choice is really up to personal preference. I mean, the only way to find out which one you'll prefer is to actually use them in real life. Now, I personally like brown switches because like the name suggests, they're quieter than other switches. Mechanical keyboards, especially with clicky blue switches, for example, can get very loud. And this can be annoying in an office environment or at home and someone's in the other room trying to sleep or work, for example. Here's the K2 Pro with red switches. And here's the low profile K3 Pro with brown switches. And just for comparison, here's the Logitech MX Mechanical Mini with brown switches. They all sound and feel really nice, much better than your typical membrane keyboards. And in terms of actual typing feel, the K3 Pro is similar to the MX Mechanical but I definitely give the edge to the non-low profile boards like the K2 and the K8 Pro. Key travel is just really nice. There's a satisfying click when keys are pressed and it just feels like you're typing on a really premium expensive keyboard, even though it only costs around $90. And you can do some basic mods to make it feel even better. Overall, I think Keychron has done a really good job with the K Pro series. Yes, there are better mechanical keyboards out there, but you really have to go into enthusiast territory to get them or build them yourself. And as a result, they're usually going to cost quite a bit more. For just under a hundred bucks, you get an impressive out of the box experience that you can fully customize to your liking and stacks up really well to another really popular keyboard the MX Mechanical from Logitech. Sure, the Logitech board has better battery life, software features, and connectivity, but everything else is just better on the Keychron for $60 or 40% less cost. And if you want a full in-depth comparison between the MX Mechanical from Logitech and the K3 Pro from Keychron, just let me know down below.